Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. Now today we're going to be drawing a cute, very simple to be honest, little bunny to celebrate Lunar New Year because 2023 is the year of the rabbit. So grab your drawing tools and let's get started. Now, as usual, I'm going to be working in an app called Procreate, which is on the iPad, where you can follow along with really any digital art software of your choice, as long as you're comfortable with the basic features such as colors, brushes, and layers. So really, we're not going to use anything fancy here. And we're going to start with a very simple sketch, just roughly mapping out the basic forms and the basic shapes that are going to create the rabbit. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer and rename that new layer to Sketch. Now we're not going to see the sketch in the final result, so really you can use whatever color you want here. I like to sketch with just a neutral gray, so that's what I'm going to use. And in terms of brushes here, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know exactly what I'm about to say. I'm going to do my best to give you a few different options. So I'm going to suggest free brushes that come with Procreate that you can use to get really good results. I'm also going to do my best to suggest ways to find alternatives if you're working in different software of brushes that could be similar or comparable to the ones I'm going to be using. And I'm also going to suggest brushes from my inking, stippling, and texture bundle. And I want to make that very clear, these brushes are not essential at all. But if you do want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below. And there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. But again, they're not essential at all. Especially for the sketch here, the brush doesn't matter at all. As long as you're comfortable with it, that's really all that is important. So if you're working at Procreate, that could mean going in the sketching pack that comes with the app and picking something like the HB Pencil. And if you're working in a different software, again, anything you're comfortable with, or maybe something that has pencil in the name, that could be a good alternative. And if you do have my inking, stippling, and texture bundle, we are going to go in the inking pack that comes within that bundle, and we're going to pick the bonus sketching brush. So we're going to start here with just a very loose circle that is going to become the head. And then we're going to draw another circle that is going to be roughly the same size as this one, a little bit lower and towards the right, and that's going to become the rabbit's um, rear end, I guess. And from there, we're just going to connect both of these circles using really intense curves to create the back and then the belly and the neck. So the back curve is going to start roughly in the middle, a little bit more towards the right of this top circle, and then it's going to join the top of the bottom circle. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Now the other curve that is going to become the neck and the belly is going to start in on the top left, roughly here I would say, of the head circle. And then it's going to wrap around, whoops, <laughs> wrap around the thigh circle. Great. From there we're going to map out the thigh and the rest of the leg. So the thigh itself we have essentially the top section of it, but we're going to extend it towards the bottom left like this. So just this big U shape. And a little bit further out, we're going to draw another circle, much smaller, this one, which is going to become the ankle. And then from there, we're going to connect the back of the thigh where all these lines intersect. With a slight curve, we're going to connect that with the ankle. Then the top of the thigh, same thing, curve, connecting it with the ankle. And then we're going to extend everything to create the foot. And this sketch is not meant to look good. If you have a bunch of crazy lines everywhere, that is totally okay. The goal here is just to really quickly start placing the structure. And once we're done mapping out the basic shapes and forms, we're going to come back in and play around with them until we're happy with the sketch. So for now, really just do your best to follow along and map out the shapes the best as you can. Now the other leg is going to be hidden behind, so you can just kind of mirror that foot essentially. You don't have to worry too much about circles and stuff like that. We're also going to draw a cute little oval at the top of the butt, which is going to become the tail. And we're also going to draw a small circle towards the front where the curve is the most intense. So roughly here. And that circle is essentially going to be kind of the shoulder. So from there, you can just extend and draw a droopy arm like this. And you can also draw another one. So at this point, we have pretty much all the body mapped out. We're just going to zoom onto the head to finish it up. And we're going to start by just refining the shape of the head because a rabbit's head is not just round like this. It has a little bit more of a, a nose. 
So we're going to draw that nose by extending the bottom of the circle into more of a soft curve. Then we're going to break that soft curve and bring it as a vertical line. And we're going to bring that in by connecting the vertical line back to the top of the head. And then we're going to map out some long ovals for the ears. And a trick to align the ear, at least the one in the front, is to align it where the neck meets the cranium. So essentially here. And last but not least, we're going to draw the eye. Now the eye, you can really place it wherever you want. You could have a few different shapes. You could have a happy closed eye. You can have a more peaceful closed eye. But I'm just going to draw a very simple open eye in this case. And I'm going to place it in the top front third of this circle, roughly. So if I was to very quickly divide it in three, you can see three sections like this, and then three sections like this. I'm going to place the eye roughly here. Oh, and we can also sketch a little nose. So starting from this point right here in front of the face, drawing a slight curve with a tiny little vertical line going toward the bottom. So once you're done mapping out the structure, we're gonna come back in and before adding the colors, we're just gonna move the basic shapes around, maybe resize them, rotate them, until we have a structure that we're really, really happy with. So again, it doesn't need to look good in terms of the lines being clean and nice, but it needs to be a structure that we like in terms of the proportions. So for example here, I feel like the head is a little bit too small, especially the ears, but because it is just a bunch of basic shapes roughly sketched out, it is going to be very easy to fix that. So I'm just going to use a selection tool. In Procreate, there's a selection tool right here at the top. And I'm going to set that tool to freehand so that I am in full control of my selection. And I'm going to draw that selection around the element I want to change, in this case, the head. And from there, I'm going to use my arrow tool here to resize the head, maybe rotate it, and move it as needed. I feel like it might have been a little bit too long as well, so I'm going to just squish it by using the distort tool. Might make the ears even bigger, so again, just using a selection tool to draw a selection. Error tool to resize as desired using either uniform if you want to maintain the proportions or distort if you want to squish in either direction and then just repositioning the element as desired. So feel free to pause the video here. It is really important you take all the time you need to move your elements around until you're really happy with your base sketch. And once you're done, we're going to meet up in the next chapter, which is going to be adding the colors. So that was by far the hardest part of the tutorial. For now, essentially, it's just like we're working with a coloring book. So the next step we're going to do is just color blocking the different elements on separate layers, starting with the bunny itself. Now, to make it a little bit easier to visualize what we're doing, though, it might be helpful to change the blending mode of our sketch to something like multiply. Now, blending modes are available in most software. Usually, they are with the opacity of your layers. So if you're not exactly sure where that is, just try and find your opacity sliders or your opacity settings, and you should find your blending modes there as well. In Procreate, if you open up your layer panel, you're going to see a little letter next to the check mark on each layer. So we're going to tap on the one that is with the sketch layer. So as you can see here, we have the opacity slider and then we have a list of a bunch of names. Those are blending modes. So the blending mode we're going to pick here is multiply. It is super basic. So if you have blending modes, you have multiply somewhere. In Procreate, it is at the very top of the list. And essentially a blending mode is going to take a layer and it's going to change the color of that layer based on the colors underneath, depending on what blending mode you used. And multiply is a blending mode that is going to darken your colors, which makes it a very useful blending mode to use on your sketch layers because it means you can draw whatever underneath and the sketch is still going to be very visible. Now, once that is done, go ahead and create a new layer, put it below the sketch layer and rename it to rabbit. And here for the rabbit, we're gonna go with a really dark, charcoal so not pure black but also not just gray we're going to have a tiny tiny little bit of red in it just to make the color richer and i'm already at red but i'm going to go with a red that has a little tiny bit of purple in it not too much just like this and from there we're just going to go ahead and pick a really dark 
desaturated version of that red, so toward the bottom left of our color selector. And here, if you want, you could obviously pick your own color. You could do something completely different. You could also just practice your eye, train your eye, and try to recreate the color I am picking. But if you want to have the exact same color I will be using, I will always have the Xcode right here on the top right. So you can just use that to recreate the exact same color in your software. Now, if you're working in Procreate, you can just take that little code and write it in this hexadecimal field right there. Here, in terms of brushes, we just want something solid. So the most basic, hard, round brush you have would work really well for this. If you're working with Procreate, that would mean going in the airbrushing pack and picking the hard brush, making sure that the opacity of your brush is set to 100%. If you're working a different software, again, the most basic round brush you have that doesn't have texture or feathering or anything like that is the way to go. If you do have my inking, stippling, and texture bundle, you have a couple options within that bundle. You could pick the bonus base round brush or the ultra smooth tracing. Both could work really, really well. And from there, what we're going to do, very simple, we're just going to outline the shape of the bunny and then fill it in to create a silhouette. And the size of the brush here is totally up to you. It's going to depend on a few things like the brush you're using, the canvas size you're working with, as well as how much details you want to add in your piece. So there's nothing like trying a few things you can even change along the way. As long as you're able to draw the details and the angles and the curves that you want to have in your piece, that means you have a good size brush. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I know everyone on YouTube is asking you to do that, but believe it or not, it really does help us a lot because it tells YouTube to show the video to more people. So thank you for helping. And once you have your outline, you can just drop in your color to fill it in. Now, it is one thing to draw a sketch that we like, but when we start adding colors and color blocking elements, especially creating silhouettes like this, you might notice that the shapes are not exactly what you thought they would look like. So at this stage, if you're not super happy with your silhouette, it is totally normal. We're just going to take a few minutes to refine it very quickly. So for example here, I feel like the top of my bunny head is a little bit too focused on the left and a little bit too tall. I didn't really follow the line super well, but I'm just gonna come back in and fix that. I'm also going to come back in, make the neck a little bit thicker, and maybe raise the ears a little bit as well by using my selection tool, just like we did in the sketch face. So once more, feel free to pause the video here to take all the time you need to play with your silhouette. It is really important you have a silhouette that you're super happy with because it is still quite easy to change it at this stage. But when we start adding the details, especially the gold foil element, it's going to be really quite a bit harder to change that base uh, rabbit shape. So it's a really good idea to do it now. So once you're happy with your base rabbit shape, we're going to color block a few I would say decorative elements in the background before moving on to the next chapter, which is going to be adding the details and really bringing the piece to life. And I'm going with very simple decorative elements, but you can customize them to your liking, and I'm going to give you tips along the way on how you could do that. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to change the background color. So that is the first thing you can completely change. You can set it to absolutely whatever you want. If you really want to honor Lunar New Year, you could go with a nice bright red or a golden color. Here I'm going to go with something a little bit more subdued, so I'm going to personally pick a very light gray, and I'm going to add just a little bit of purple within that light gray. So something a little bit like this in terms of brightness and saturation, you can see very, very bright, and just the tiniest little bit of saturation. But I'm going to go with more of a purple than a red, kind of like this. 
If you're working with Procreate, there's always a background color layer that comes with any canvas that you create. So you would just go ahead, select that layer and set it to whatever color you want. So again, in my case, a very light gray that has a little bit of purple in it. But if you're working in a different software that doesn't automatically have a background color layer, very easy, just create a new layer, rename it to background, put it at the very bottom of your layer list, and then just drop your color onto that layer to fill it in. I'm also going to add a white moon in the back. I think it's going to complement the shape of the rabbit really well. And it's also, you know, Lunar New Year, so moon. For that, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to put it below the rabbit layer, but above the background layer. And I'm going to rename it to moon. For this, I'm just going to pick pure white, very simple. And I'm actually going to start with a circle, but I'm realizing here my rabbit might be a little bit too big right now. So I'm just going to go ahead select both my sketch and my rabbit layer and just make them smaller and make sure they're exactly where I want them to be in my canvas, which for now is going to be here. Okay, so now that is done, we're gonna go back to the moon layer and we're just going to draw a circle. Now, if you're working with Procreate, you can be very, very rough and loose as you can see here. As long as you hold your pencil, Procreate is going to smooth it. If you just hold your pencil, it's going to create an ellipse, but if you come back and tap with another finger, it's going to create a perfect circle, which you can then resize by moving your pencil around. Then I'm going to fill in the circle, and I'm going to come back in with an eraser to create a crescent moon shape. And same thing here with the eraser, you're just going to pick the most simple round eraser shape you have, so no texture, no feathering, no opacity, just around eraser. So in Procreate that would mean just going back to the airbrushing pack and picking the hard brush once more. And here you can use the same trick if you're working in Procreate, meaning you can draw a very quick rough circle. Hold a pencil, tap with another finger, and then just come back in and erase the center. Now I'm also going to add some clouds. I'm going to make them red. I'm going to use one of the two, I would say, main visual styles of clouds uh, that you can see in Lunar New Year illustrations. Again, you can go with something completely different, but I personally want to hint a little bit at more, I would say, traditional Lunar New Year pieces. So I'm going to show you the two main ways of drawing clouds that I've seen in a lot of paintings and illustrations. But again, feel free to do something completely different if you want. So these elements, whether they are clouds or not, I recommend having them behind the rabbit, but above the moon, if you do have one in the background. So I'm gonna create a new layer right there that I'm going to rename to cloud. And here I'm gonna pick a really nice, vibrant raspberry red. So a red that is a little bit more on the purple side as opposed to the orange side. And very, very saturated, as you can see, and probably middle of the way in terms of brightness. So the first type of cloud is what I call swirly clouds. So I'm just going to give you an example here at the top. You would start with one of those basic fluffy cloud shapes that we all know of. And then you would either make one or both edges of the cloud as a pointy little shape like this. And if you're only drawing one, you would just close the other side with a curve. Now my shape here is not quite right. These little fluffs should be a little bit rounder. And once you have that basic shape, you would come back in with your eraser. Still again, a very basic round shape, but much smaller. So we'd follow the shape of some of the little fluffs and then bring them in to create a spiral. So one there, and maybe let's say, Let's try here. Yeah, something like that. So that is cloud option number one. It is, as you can see, very whimsical and a little bit more cutesy. I'm personally going to use for this illustration option two, which I feel is a little bit more structured and feel more graphic, if that makes sense at all. Option two is going to be essentially a stack of long rounded rectangles. 
So if that is the option that you want to use as well, we're going to start by just creating one of these rounded rectangles, and then we're just going to create copies of it and move them around. So starting with just one horizontal line, and then another horizontal line, and then connecting those with curves on either sides. So as you can see, very simple. Then we're going to fill it in. Maybe rotate it if it is crooked like mine. I'm going to place it here to start my first cloud. I might make it a little bit thinner. I'm just going to squish it. And then we're just going to create copies of that cloud layer to create copies of the shapes. In Procreate, you can duplicate your layer by just swiping it towards the left and selecting the duplicate option right here. And then you can just move your shape as desired. So the idea here is going to be having probably three horizontal lines per cloud, making sure they're not all the same length and making sure they're also a little bit staggered. Might add a little bit of a drop, well, not a drop, but just a very short version of those lines on the sides. Although by squishing it that much, it's going to make the sides really, really weird. <laughs> so I'm just going to come back in and erase them to make it nicely curved. Now, one thing you might notice here, the lines are going to be different lengths, but they're all going to be the same height. So make sure you don't squish the height Make sure you just squish or extend the length. And we're also going to connect these horizontal lines with vertical lines. But before we do that, let's just keep duplicating our horizontal lines so we don't lose our model base shape. And here, obviously, if you want, you can copy exactly what I'm doing. That is totally fine. But I encourage you to try and step maybe a little bit out of your comfort zone and try to draw your own clouds. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this fun video, please go ahead and leave me a comment with the words, mm, let's go with just Lunar New Year. Now, if you're new on the channel, you might be a little bit confused with what is the secret password thing. Essentially, it's a game that we play here on the channel. In all of the long form illustration tutorials, I hide a secret password or sometimes a prompt for you to find. And that does a few things. For example, when I host giveaways, that is your key to enter the giveaway. But most importantly, I know it sounds silly, but it does give me a lot of insight into how to edit and paste my videos better. And that helps me create better tutorials for you. So again, if you watch this far, just leave a comment with the words Lunar New Year, and then we're going to keep going. So once you're happy with your base cloud, what we're going to do is we're just going to merge all of the cloud layers so we are back to just one. So in Procreate, the way to merge layers is just to squish them with two fingers into one. Now it might be a little bit hard if you have a lot of layers like me, but we're still going to try. There we go, oops, I forgot one. There you go. <laughs> and from there, we're just going to add the little vertical lines I was telling you about. You're just going to draw two little curves like this and then fill in the middle to create the vertical section. 
and you can draw one, two, maybe three, although that feels a little bit much uh, between every horizontal section. And once you're done, of course, feel free to move them around as needed. So once more, take all the time you need here to play with the different elements until you're happy with the basic color blocking. And once you're done with that, we're going to meet up in the next chapter, which is going to be adding details. Great, so at this stage we're just going to add a few little details, nothing complicated, but it is completely going to transform the piece because, let's face it, right now it doesn't look necessarily the best. So go ahead and create a new layer above your rabbit, and rename that new layer to Details. And here in my mind, this piece is a little bit like a stamp of the rabbit, which means I want the details to look like they were not covered in ink, so they were just blank part of the stamp essentially, which means they would be the same color as the background. Obviously here you can experiment with completely different colors for your details, but again, what I'm going to personally do is just color pick the color I use for my background and then use that for the details as well. And in terms of brushes here, we're going to go back to the same one we used for the sketch. So if you're working with free Procreate brushes, that was the HB pencil from the sketching pack that comes with the app. If you're working with a different software, anything that has pencil in a name and allows you to have enough precision. So you don't want something super thick like a charcoal pencil that is usually very rough. And although we do want some texture, we mostly want the precision at this stage. If you do have my inking, stippling and texture bundle, again, we were working with the sketching brush. The first details we're going to add here are just going to be elements that we had in our sketch but that are not in the silhouette. And here you probably want to use a fairly small size for your brush. Again, there's no right or wrong size here, just make sure you test it until you find something you like. And we're going to start by adding details that are just going to be to help us visualize the shape of the rabbit because right now it is a silhouette. So the first one we're going to add is just going to be the curve of the thigh. And so for that, very easy, you can just follow the line that you have in your sketch. Now you can have just one very clean line if you want, but to make it look a little bit more like a stamp and also a little bit more like fur, I'm personally going to add a few little lines. Now in the same vein, we're also going to add a line that delimitates this backside of the rabbit. So starting roughly in the middle of the tail. Again, very loose sketch-like lines. And then it would follow the butt right here until it meets with the leg where once more you're just going to follow along your sketch to draw your details. Same thing for the front legs. This little line right here and then this long one on the top. Marking the belly or the neck. I'm not exactly sure what it is <laughs> by now. And you can also refine the paws by adding these very simple little curves.
We're also going to draw the cheek. So same thing, just following the curve from the sketch. We're going to draw the nose. I'm going to stop saying it, but just following the lines from the sketch. The ear. The back of the head or the top of the head. And we're going to draw something that is not in our sketch, which is going to be the inside of the ear. So you're just going to draw one long line that matches the top shape of that ear. And then not starting right at the bottom, just a little bit further up, you're going to draw a line that roughly matches the bottom of the ear. For now, I'm not going to draw the eye because the eye, I want it to be pure white to really pop. So I'm just going to keep drawing some details. And the last few ones that we're going to draw are actually going to be uh, little details on the back paws and then just a bunch of tiny little hair strokes and uh, whiskers. For the paws, honestly, you could just leave them like that or add little curves like we had on the front paws. Now from there we're going to come back in and make the brush even smaller so it should be very tiny by now and we're just going to add a bit of hair texture on some sections. Now the sections I'm just going to cover are going to be this area of the belly and the neck, then right under the face or the head I should say, around the eye, above the nose, and at the bottom of the tail and then a few little hairs here and there on the thighs and the arms. So we're going to start with the belly. Essentially all we're doing is drawing some very quick short strokes like this. So once you have the belly done, go ahead and just keep going. So skipping over the arm and then just doing this little triangle area where the belly becomes the back of the neck. And then we're going to do the front of the neck, I guess, so right below the head. Then above the nose and the front of the face. These should be very subtle. You don't want to overdo it there for sure. Same thing above and under the eye, leaving a little gap. So mostly on the front for above. And these are probably going to be slightly longer and a little bit curved as well. And then towards the left side on the bottom. And the last area we're going to focus on is the bottom of the tail.
And once we have these main sections, we're just going to come back in and add a few stray hairs, as I mentioned. Now those, you can put them really whatever you want. I'm going to draw a few in the front of the thigh. Maybe a few on the back of the thigh. A few on the arms. And I'm going to leave the face as is, but I'm going to add some whiskers. So I'm going to add three right under the eye. Maybe going back in with a slightly bigger brush just so that they pop. And I'm also going to add two small ones that I go towards the top left above the eye. Oh, and I almost forgot, we're going to draw a few small dots in this area here between the eye and the nose, a little bit below. Just a few very small ones. I'm going to go with five like this. And from there, we're going to draw the eye itself. So you can go ahead and if you had a white moon, you can just color pick that. Otherwise, just set your color to pure white. Zoom back in and then draw the eye itself. And as you can see here, I am not filling it in using color drop or something like that because I do want to have a bit of texture within it. So I'm going to make sure I'm using the brush to manually fill it in. Now at this stage, go ahead and hide the sketch. We shouldn't need it anymore. You can double check, making sure you have everything mapped out. I think everything should be there in my case. Yep. And if you have a moon just like me, while we have white and this sketching brush or pencil brush, we're going to go back on the moon layer and we're going to add a few stars and a few dots just to make it look like it's bright and shimmery. So maybe a slightly bigger brush, so small to medium. You can draw small dots and circles in groups of one, two, or three. I know one is not a group, but <laughs> you see what I mean. And you can also draw little sparkles. And the way I like to draw sparkles is starting with a vertical line, then drawing in the middle a slightly smaller horizontal line. I'll zoom in, you can't see anything. So vertical line, horizontal line. And then just adding little curves like that to fill in the center. Now this is also something you definitely do not want to overdo. So just a few little sparkles, a handful, well not a handful, a few handfuls of little dots just to make the background feel a little bit more complete. Now before we add the gold details, we're just going to refine the shape of the rabbit a little bit by doing two things, adding some hair on the outside edge as well as adding a little bit of texture. So go back on your rabbit layer, color pick the color of the rabbit, and with the same pencil brush, just go on some of the edges. I'm going to focus on the back of the neck here and just draw, I don't know, I would say three or five little hair strands like this just to help break the very round shape and make it a little bit more interesting. Now you could add them wherever you want. I think, again, I'm going to focus mine on this side of the neck and maybe a little bit on the tail as well, just to make it look extra fluffy. So I'm just going to refine that point here and add a few hair strands.
Now, as I mentioned, we're also going to add a bit of texture. And for that, you're probably going to need to explore your software, the brush options you have, and try to find something that looks a little bit like spray paint. So if you're working with Procreate, a free option would be going in the spray paints pack that comes with the app and picking the Flix brush. Oh my gosh, I just realized I did all these tutorials calling that brush the G-Clay brush because that's what it used to be labeled. But I think that was the French version of that brush. So I'm really sorry, I just realized for like two years I gave you the French name. Well, the G-Clay brush or the Flix brush, the one that looks like that at least. But if you do have my inking, stippling and texture bundle, we're going to go in the texture pack and pick the speckles brush. And we want that texture to stay within the rabbit shapes. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate what is called alpha lock on the rabbit shape. And so to activate alpha lock in Procreate really easy, just take two fingers and swipe your layer towards the right. There we go. And this little checkered pattern is going to appear right here. If you do not have alpha lock in your software, just create a new layer above your rabbit shape so that you can then come back in and erase any speckles or speckles or spray paint, whatever that is, that is outside of the shape. If you have alpha lock though, again, whatever we draw on this layer now that it has alpha lock activated is going to stay within the shape that was already there. So it's super easy. What we can do from now is just color pick the color of the rabbit, make it a tiny, tiny little bit brighter. Not a whole lot. We really don't want these speckles to be too intense. So just the tiniest little change. And then we're just going to brush towards the bottom side of the rabbit, which as you can see is going to create that really nice, rich texture. You can also play with different sizes. So once you have that, you can go back in, color pick a section that doesn't have any of the texture so you get back to your original rabbit gray. And this time we're going to make it darker, so by now it should be almost black, but not quite. And we're going to make the brush quite a bit smaller, and we're going to focus that darker texture on elements that are behind. So the ear here in the back, the arm here, in the back or the front leg, the back leg, and the tail. It is really subtle. I'm not sure how much the camera is even picking up right now, but it does make a difference in making the piece polished, if you will. And from there, the last little thing we're going to do is adding some gold details. And for that, I'm going to show you a technique that you can use to mimic gold foil in Procreate. So we're going to start by just drawing the details or the gold foil elements normally with a golden color. So it's not going to be a yellow, it's going to be more of an orange. Really, really bright, actually fully bright and quite saturated as well. And we're going to go back to the brush we use for sketching for the details, so a pencil brush. If you have my inking, stippling and texture bundle, we're going to go back again to the bonus sketching brush. And these details, we want them to stay within the rabbit shape, but we want them to be on a separate layer so that we can add the gold foil effect. So for that, just create, well, a new layer above the rabbit. Rename that new layer to gold details. And so that it stays within the shape of the rabbit, we're going to use a clipping mask. So in Procreate, just tap on the layer and select clipping mask within the menu. Now from there, whatever we draw on this gold details layer is going to stay within the rabbit shape. Now clipping masks are available in most digital art software. If you cannot find them, same thing as for alpha lock, just create that new layer, draw your details, and then once you're done, come back in and erase whichever details are going outside of the shape. It's really not a big deal. And here again, I'm going with something that hints to Lunar New Year art. So I'm going to draw a few flowers that have five petals. That's not five, that's four. <laughs> five petals each. And I'm going to focus them on areas that are really chunky on the rabbit. So the, the buttocks, the shoulder, and the cheek. And these flowers, you can really customize them. I think as long as you have five <laughs> petals, it's going to look right. I'm going to show you a few different shapes that you can mix and match. And here you're going to go with a medium to small size brush. Again, just make sure you test it. It should be a little bit thicker than your details, but not too thick either. And here I'm going to start with just a small circle with a dot in the middle. And from there, I'm going to drop petals. Now here I'm going to freehand them, but if you're not super sure, you can go ahead and try to divide your circle first in five before drawing the curves. But again, I'm just going to freehand them very roughly. 
And the petals, you should draw them so that they're really quite broad at the top and just slightly curvy. Just gonna refine that one a little bit. It's not perfect, but I think that's totally okay for what we're doing here. So if you're drawing a flower, that really is the base shape you're going to reuse, either with a complete full middle, a dot like this, just a circle, you can kind of mix and match, but that would be the basic shape. And from there, what you can do is customize the flowers to make them a little bit different from one another by either adding little half circles on the top of the petals. or by adding little lines within the petals. And just like we did for the clouds, once you have one flower you're happy with, consider just duplicating that flower and then making it either bigger, smaller, changing a few details, as opposed to just starting from scratch. That being said, if you just want to start from scratch, you can obviously do that as well, but I'm going to copy paste or duplicate at least. And once you do have the amount of flowers you want, once they're roughly where you want them to be, just go back and merge all of the layers so that you have just one gold detailed layer. And then you can go back in and easily change the flowers. So here I'm going to erase the semicircle on the top. As well as the dot in the middle. And this one I'm just going to make the middle completely filled. Now on top of using flowers, you can also use essentially sunbursts. So I'm gonna draw one on a cheek to show you an example of what it could be, but that's something that you can completely customize once more. So we could start with, for example, a little dot right here, and then just drawing some rays around it. You can also draw some dots instead of rays if you want. It's very simple, but as you can see, it completely transforms the piece very quickly. And I'm also going to add another kind of sunburst, but this time it's going to be just dots here on the front of the thighs. And I'm going to add some extra circles and dots just to fill in the shape a little bit more. And I feel like this arm is a little bit empty, so I'm just going to add some little lines on it, little curves. 
Now we're going to make it look a little bit more like gold foil by adding a gold texture. If you already have one, you can totally use that. Otherwise, I created a free one that you can download from the description below. Again, it is completely free. It is part of my Procreate Jumpstart Kit, which is called Procreate Jumpstart Kit, but it includes alternatives for a bunch of other software as well. So even if you're working with a different software, you can still go ahead and download the freebie, especially this gold texture. It is just a regular image, so nothing super crazy there. And once you have it, go ahead and import it in your file. So in Procreate, the way to do that is to go in the wrench icon menu here at the top. In the add some menu, selecting either insert a file or insert a photo, depending on how you save this image. So if you saved it in a folder, for some reason, it's going to be in insert a file. If you saved it within your camera roll, it's going to be insert a photo. So just tap on whichever one applies to your case and then locate the texture and import it in your file. Now, once it is in your file, go ahead and open the layer menu and rename that new layer that was created with the texture to gold. But right now the texture fills in the entire canvas, which is definitely not what we want. So if you do want to have gold detail textures, we're going to do a bit of a switcheroo. So we're going to deactivate the clipping mask that we use on the gold detail layer. And then we're going to apply that gold texture as a clipping mask on the gold detail layer itself. So it's going to look a little bit like this. We're just going to Tap on the gold detail layer, deactivate clipping mask, then go on the gold layer itself and activate clipping mask. And from there you can use the arrow tool and move your texture around and resize it as needed. So the texture I provided is quite big, so you probably want to resize it to make sure you can see some of the sparkles within the shapes. And then we're just going to go back on the gold details layer itself and we're going to erase the shapes that are poking out. Now this is a good start, but to really amp up the gold foil effect, we're going to add a few more layers, one with shadows and one with highlights. Now for the shadow layer, we're actually going to just duplicate the gold details layer we have. So just swipe it towards the left with one finger if you're working in Procreate and tap on duplicate. And here you're going to select the bottom copy. Now we're going to apply a blending mode to this bottom copy and we're going to use the same one we use for the sketch, so multiply. So I'm just going to open up my menu here and select multiply from the top of the list. From there you can zoom in so you can see a little bit better on any part of your goal details. And with an arrow tool, you're just going to move that shadow towards the bottom right a little bit. It's probably going to be very hard to see for now, but if I zoom in quite a lot, you're going to see it's creating this tiny little black edge right under the details. And just so we're a little bit less confused in our layer names, we're going to rename that bottom copy, which is now the shadows. We're going to rename that to gold details shadows. And so that they pop a little bit more, we're also going to recolor that layer with black. So you have a few different ways of doing that. One that I really like that is super handy and super quick is activating alpha lock onto that layer, just like we did for the rabbit. So just swiping it towards the right with two fingers and then just selecting fill layer from the menu. If you don't have alpha lock in your software, again, you could just use whatever recoloring tool you have available to you. So something like uh, hue, saturation, brightness, curves, any other filter you have that allows you to darken your color, you just pick that and then you make it as dark as you can. And I feel like my shadows are way too close to the gold details themselves. I'm just going to use my arrow tool again and move them to make sure I have quite a bit of distance. As you can see, it's very subtle. When you zoom out, you don't see much of it, but it does help make everything pop. And to make it pop even more, we're going to add highlights. Now these highlights are very simple. Just go ahead and create a new layer above the gold. Rename that new layer to highlights. Oh wow. Apply as a clipping mask above the gold, but it's still going to be a clipping mask onto the gold details. So whatever we draw is going to stay within the gold details. And once more, we're going to use a blending mode, but this time we're going to use a blending mode that makes everything brighter. I would say color dodge or overlay are two really strong contenders. So I'm going to use color dodge for now. And here, just pick a very bright, yellow orange color. Honestly, the exact color doesn't matter at all. I'm not even going to add the X code because again, it is really not important. And you're just going to draw these very loose squiggles over your details, which is going to really help that foil effect.
Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to draw a magical moth, I highly recommend you check out this video because I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it step by step. But before we leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly tutorials I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.